She walked up to the counter, on top of which stood five stands, where brochures and business cards were kept. Just the usual please, darling. Of course, Miss Rarity, replied Lotus, who was opening the cash register. So, how have you been doing, dear Fluttershy? Oh, I've been doing just fine, Rarity. Just fine, that's good. How have the animals been lately? Oh, poor Angel Bunny sprained his hind leg. The poor thing has been in bed all day. Oh, how terrible. I do hope that he will be okay. Oh, he will. All he needs is love, care and some support from his animal friends. Him. Speaking of friends, where has Twilight been lately? Come to think about it, I haven't seen Rainbow Dash, or Pinky either. Have you any idea where they would be? Yeah, in hell, you'll be joining them soon, thought Fluttershy, gruesome images of Rarity's death crossing her mind. No, I haven't, sorry. Him. Okay, well, I have this dress I really want you to try on. It's my latest project. Oh, how wonderful. I would love to try it on. What is it like? Fluttershy and Rarity spent the next two hours of the massage talking about how the dress would fit her, whether it should go for sale, or if it should be presented at the Grand Galloping Gala. All the while, Fluttershy was thinking of all the ways she could painfully end Rarity's life. She thought of slow dismemberment, but didn't go with it because of how messy it could be. She thought of suffocation, but again thought against it because it wasn't messy, or gruesome enough. So she had to pull out one of the oldest techniques known to pony kind. Miss Rarity, our session is done. Would you like the special treatment, like yesterday? Rarity blushed heavily, quickly glancing at Fluttershy, who had a puzzled look on her face. Uh, not today, Lotus. As you wish, Miss Rarity. Then our session has concluded. Rarity got off the massage bed, and walked to the entrance, Fluttershy not too far behind. Er, uh, Rarity, may I show you something? Sure thing dear, as long as it doesn't take long, I want to get this dress on you as soon as possible. Fluttershy and Rarity walked along the path, back to Fluttershy's shack. Rarity noticed that it was getting darker and darker, and that Fluttershy had lead her off the track, and into the old, tall trees that surrounded the path. Eh hey, er, uh, Fluttershy, dear, where are we going? Actually, what were you meant to show me? You'll see soon enough, replied Fluttershy, menace in her tone. Okay, dear, if you say so, they walked for what seemed like hours, through the tall trees, the spiky plants, and the poison joke that was starting to spread. They finally arrived at a clearing in the forest, where clearly a two holes had been dug. One was filled, but one was not. Oh, sky black, always the forgetful one, huh? thought Fluttershy, just a tad annoyed. Here, Rarity, this is what I wanted to show you. A hole, you wanted to show me a hole. No, come closer, look inside the hole. Rarity walked towards the hole, a grin appearing on Fluttershy's face, getting wider by the second. Rarity finally reached the hole, and peered into it. Darling, I really can't see anyth, Rarity just stopped. Stopped speaking, stopped moving, stopped breathing, stopped everything. I is that, is that, P Pinky, it sure is, Rarity. You're next. Rarity saw that Pinky was bleeding from in between her hind legs. What kind of horrible monster would do this? My best friend would, Rarity. That was the last thing Rarity ever heard. For a while, anyway. Fluttershy dragged Rarity's knocked out body deeper into the forest, towards an old wheel device she had found while looking for a hurt bird. She reached it two hours later, lifted Rarity's body into the device, strapped her onto it, and waited. She waited for about three more hours, before Rarity came to. The white unicorn looked around frantically, taking in her surroundings, and more so what she was strapped to. W where am I? A little place I like to call, Equestria's Hell. Rarity looked around again, and this time she fully took in her surroundings. She saw that there were three other wheels like the one she was strapped to. She looked back at Fluttershy, who now had a sledgehammer in her grip. W what are you doing, Fluttershy? Okay, I guess I shall explain what will happen. 
Fluttershy dropped the sledgehammer on the ground, and sat down on a small chair next to the wheel that Rarity was strapped to. Okay, so, as you can see, you are obviously strapped to a wheel. But, this isn't any ordinary wheel. This is an executioner's wheel. If you look at all of the other wheels around here, you will see that they have very small, but strong spokes. These spokes work according to where the victim's limbs are placed. When you strap the victim to the wheel, the limbs must be covering the gaps, so that the bone breaks properly when I hit it. I think you know what follows. Oh no, no 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 no. Help, please s-o-m-e-p-o-n-y-he. -E. Fluttershy hit Rarity's lower jaw with her sledgehammer, shattering the majority of it. Shut up. Fluttershy went over to a hollowed out tree trunk, from which she took out a glove of some sort. She walked over to Rarity, who was recovering from the hit to the jaw, and put it over her horn. No more magic for you, Rarity. She picked up the sledgehammer from where it was resting, and lifted it high. Now, Rarity, this is going to hurt. A lot. Then, with all her might, she slammed the hammer into the front knee joint of her victim. Rarity's eyes went wide with horror, and little more than a squeak left her mouth. Her leg had snapped and splinted in almost nine different places. Her leg burst wide open, blood pouring and her bone jutting out. Fluttershy lifted the hammer again, and hit Rarity's leg harder. Fluttershy kept on smashing the hammer into Rarity's front leg, until crunching and snapping turned into squishing and squelching. Blood and bone shards littered the floor. Fluttershy finally stopped. She looked at Rarity's leg, but there was nothing really to look at. All that was left of it was a pile of blood, flesh and bone. Fluttershy lifted the hammer again, and this time she aimed for the forehead. She slammed it down with all of her strength. When the hammer struck, Rarity's skull caved in. Her skull's fragments cave inwards, piercing her brain, which killed her instantly. Or, I was hoping to have some more fun with you. She stood up onto the wheel, and gripped the sledgehammer like a golf club. She took a few practice swings, so she could get used to swinging something this heavy. F-O-O-O-O-U-U-R. Fluttershy swung, and hit Rarity's horn, which came off with a sickening, snap. The horn went flying, it went so far that Fluttershy couldn't even see it anymore. She brought the hammer back down, and set it beneath Rarity's chin. F-O-O-O-O-U-U-R again. She swung the hammer with all her might, and hit Rarity's chin with tremendous force. All this did was get the hammer stuck in her jaw. Ah, god damn it. She ripped the hammer out, and this time she aimed just a little bit lower, going for the lower end of the jaw. Foo ow, my throat hurts. She swung a third time, and hit directly where she wanted. This caused the head to jerk violently, hard enough to rip open the front of her throat, her windpipe waggling about wildly. She quickly swung again, and this time the head disconnected entirely. It flew about 45 meters, then landed, but didn't stop. It rolled for another 10 meters, leaving a trail of blood behind it. About damn time I got a good hit in, said Fluttershy to herself. Okay, Applejack, you're gonna be hard to kill. I got a gear up, Fluttershy flew back home, where Olicious was tearing a mouse's head off. Fluttershy flew inside, and went down into her basement. She went to a part of the wall, which always seemed to stay clean, and pulled out a key hidden under a cloth. She pushed the key into a keyhole on the other side of the room, and the part of the wall that always seemed clean, opened to reveal an armory. Her armory was so full of weapons, it was like she was preparing for World War III. She walked in, and grabbed a belt that had enough sheaths attached to hold two katanas, five shurikens, and two daggers. She kitted up, by grabbing an extra five shurikens, and a prototype magnum she had been working on. She called it, Butterfly. Okay, Applejack, let's put you to the test, shall we? Final chapter coming soon.